Hi friends, uh, today we have Sachin with us. Uh, Sachin has recently cleared two interviews, Scrum Master interviews. One is for PwC and one is for Infosys. So it's nice to have you with us, Sachin. Thanks for uh, giving your time. Yeah, so thank you Sunan for providing me this opportunity because uh, you're taking my mock interview, the, the uh, interview which I have given in a real a time base so thanks for giving me this opportunity first of all sunan from my end i would really like to thank you first of all from my end thanks thanks sachin for that so sachin we are just going to uh, ask you the same questions which uh, has been asked in your uh, previous interviews so shall we start yeah sure sunan you can okay. so why don't you tell me about yourself first like a little bit about your background as a scrum master uh, yeah, sure. So I would like to start that I have got total 7.4 years of working experience. I started basically my career back in 2008 in New Delhi as a usability analyst. Uh, so where I was looking uh, over the entire functionality of the website and mobile app development, I was working as a developer uh, also over there. So basically what will be the flow of the entire website, mobile apps at that particular point of time. From there on, I moved to Pune, from New Delhi to Pune in 2010. Then I started working in a company, again as a usability analyst, come business analyst. So I, were, I was looking after the uh, require, requirement gathering things over there. I was acting basically as a bridge between the developers and the end stakeholders. So in my entire career of uh, seven years, I have been, I have, uh, been associated with different profiles. For instance, business analyst, usability analyst, so as when I moved to Pune, I worked in a new company for two years. Then I got a chance to work again as a business analyst in other, other company. Though my designation over there was a business analyst, but I got the chance to work as a scrum master. Uh, I was reading agile and scrum on my own. So my company uh, handed over me a task that can you act as a scrum master for a couple of our projects. So I said, yes, why not? So there I started my journey as a scrum master. Uh, business analyst comes scrum master so uh, at that particular point of time uh, my product owner of my team he was in us and he was from waterfall uh, methodology so he was not much aware hands on he was not having hands on experience on agile and scrum so what i did at that particular point of time i associated with my product owner and i was guiding him i was a bit giving a bit of coaching that what is all agile scrum says then i was helping him out in the product backlog uh, refinement thing and prioritizing the user stories and all and i was again helping my team to remove the impediments which they were forcing, uh, facing at that particular point of time and so on i started my career as a scrum master then in my last company uh, which is godprint private limited uh, in pune i got a full chance to work as a product leader and a scrum master so this is my journey as a professional uh, professional journey so far then i left my job back in 2019 to I have taken a decision to do my MBA, which was of one, uh, one year full-time MBA. We started in 2019, April and got over 2020 again in April. Since then, I got an opportunity from my company itself, but unfortunately due to this Corona that got that offer got revoked. So again, I started searching for jobs and ultimately in late December and uh, by the first week of January, I have cracked two interviews. That is first is of PwC and then second is of Infosys. So this is all about a brief description about my career. Sunan. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Sachin. So uh, can you describe about all the events of Scrum and how do you facilitate them in detail? Yeah, sure, Sunan. So basically there are five events as per the new guide, which got released in 2020 November. So first is uh, sprint itself, which is the heart of the scrum, basically, which all uh, uh, we say. And it, what it says that all the events are time boxed. It should not exceed the time box fixed uh, uh, length is there for that particular event. Then second is sprint planning, uh, which is basically, again, the first event, or you can say the second event as per the new guide, new scrum guide. So what happens in the sprint planning entire scrum team sits around and how do I facilitate them? I act as a facilitator. I, my main goal or target is that everyone should be heard in that meeting. So as a silent observer, I 
uh, facilitate that meeting as a scrum master so what happens that product owner and the development team basically sits around with the scrum master with me as well or uh, in other words and they discuss about that how much user stories uh, they can take on their uh, for the upcoming sprint for instance if it's a two week sprint so how much user stories it's the core task or thing or duty of a of the developers which they to, uh, tell us that uh, for instance we can take 10 or 12 user stories for the upcoming sprint we decide the definition of done over there and we decide on a mutual agreement and that agreement uh, is commit uh, is communicated to the end stakeholders as well that was after the two week of sprint when we uh, the sprint is going to over so this will be the mvp minimal viable product which we are going to show you at by the end of that particular sprint so this is all happens uh, in the sprint planning itself if for instance we give uh, as a team we give clarity to the product owner that suppose one or two guy will be on leave if we have that in advance uh, information about uh, with us so we discuss that yes one or two resources will be on leave for one or two days so accordingly the scope of that uh, particular sprint gets uh, decided and then the team starts working then comes daily scrum again that's a one uh, one of the most important event of the scrum you can say which is again a time boxed event for basically 15 minutes which usually happens at the start of your day where the team comes around and basically it's for developers only but if product owner wants to he can come or if he don't want to he, can, he it, it, it's his or her choice so as a scrum master suppose i am joining a new team so back in 2018 when i was working with godprint so what i was doing i was handling a very new scrum team so gradually i facilitated that meeting and i taught them i coached them that this should be the criteria of that daily scrum that first of all what all went well yesterday if there are any challenges or impediments you are facing at that particular point of time so i taught them and gradually after two three sprints they came to know and they were doing that meeting on their own so basically what they were doing at that particular point of time they were inspecting and adapting uh, on daily basis they were meeting for 15 minutes at the same place at the same time and initially they were very reluctant that boss uh, sachin you are saying that for 15 minutes how can it be useful for us for just 15 minutes what can we do but initially uh, they were very hesitant uh, hesitant or they were very reluctant but gradually they came to know that yes daily scrum is one of the most important event and we, event and we should finish it within 15 minutes basically they were they were inspecting and adapting that yes this was the mistake suppose we did yesterday but now we came to know because scrum itself says that it's an empirical process so you have to believe to your on, on your knowledge what you have gained to that particular point and you have to act ac accordingly so this was what all happening in the daily scrum then after when uh, the sprint got over then we were doing the sprint review which was again uh, which is again a very important event of event of scrum so what actually happens in the sprint review is that entire team sits around and what you have committed to the stakeholders so one or two developers you give that job or they take it uh, on their own and they give a demo that what all uh, the team has achieved in this two week sprint and stakeholders sits around and they review the product the minimal viable product and they give their review that yes we like this product uh, this functionality for instance for example and if they find they find something that they didn't like so they uh, communicate at that particular point of time so that is again a very important event where you come to know that yes uh, this much 15% uh, or 20% of the product has been completed and you got a feedback uh, very fast from your stakeholders and then you act accordingly and if it's stakeholders want that they want some add-on features or add-on functionalities so they describe it at that particular point of time so this is all this this is all happens in sprint review where the product owner is also there and they agree yes boss you have committed this much in sprint planning and now you have achieved this much so all, all these things happen in sprint review then after that the last event which happens is a sprint retrospective again that is again a very important event and what all happen is that again the team sits around for half an hour and or maximum one hour it depends on the length of the for of your sprint suppose you are working you are doing a two week sprint then uh, one hour is sufficient for that retro so again what all the team discuss around and the main problem as a scrum master which i have faced with my team is the developers mainly they are you can say a bit afraid or they are not 
eager to get open so as a scrum master it's my duty that i should make my team to get open up in front of product owner and in front in front of each of each one of uh, in, in, the, in what i mean to say in front of the scrum team itself so again that is that is a very important event what happens actually is that we discuss that are there any uh, problems or puzzles which is uh, creating problem for the team what all went well in the last sprint what you have actually learned from your uh, last sprint so you should take that learning and that uh, problems and you try to solve them in uh, there only you take measures and it's not easy that you sit around for one hour and you solve all the problems but you can guide your team as a scrum master that if this is your problem then this should be the uh, solution for it so accordingly we take that lear our learning from the last sprint and we move towards our next sprint so this is all happens in sprint retrospective okay uh, thanks sachin for uh, such a detailed answer so can you just tell me like uh, as a scrum master how is your typical day looks like like what do you do uh, normally from day to day yeah sure so so basically when my day starts so it's uh, first of all um, when we sit around or uh, we do our daily stand up so at that point of time only uh, i am again a keen observer i don't speak much i just facilitate that meeting so i just keep a close eye on my team that what all they are discussing at that point of time for instance if they are facing any impediment or any issue so i try to solve them those issues on daily basis if not we are good to go then the team starts their day after that daily scrum and it's not that only that in daily scrum they meet around after if they want they meet very often in the entire day whenever they feel like so nowadays uh, things are after corona things are uh, team is diversified on on different locations so what we are doing uh, is that after the day starts we do our daily scrum if there is any, any pad impediment i try to solve that or i coach them uh, that uh, some impediments they can um, solve on their own gradually they learn uh, they are learning or in my current job they are learning that thing because i am again associated with a new very new team uh, where they are not much aware about agile scrum so i am uh, from my end i am giving them coaching but it's very new thing new environment for me new company and new team so i am taking things one by one i am not i'm just observing right now because we have completed one sprint and the second sprint is going to start uh, tomorrow from tomorrow so and after that if uh, within the day when i'm sitting at my home working from home i keep in close contact with my entire develop uh, development team that what they are up to if they, again at that daily time of daily scrum they were not facing any impediment but now two hours have gone of their shift if that particular point of time they are facing any impediment apart from that i keep a close contact with my product owner as well uh, regarding the product backlog thing or if he wants to learn something or he wants to know something from my end and apart from that i keep a close eye in the jira as well that uh, by looking the burn up charts and burn down charts basically that whether the assigned task is going smoothly or not if we are facing any issues team is uh, following the what we have decided the scope of the sprint so we are up to that or not so basically this is my typical day and sometimes uh, uh, i have a manager over there so he discuss with me about different events that how are you going to facilitate uh, daily scrum or for instance by the end of this sprint how will you how you are going to do the sprint review then sprint retro so i have a discussion with him for half an hour or 45 minutes on call this this will be my approach and so this is my typical day right now in in infosys okay uh, thanks thanks sachin for that and uh, could you please tell us about different matrices which you feel is uh, good for the team to track their performance uh yeah sure so uh, basically uh, to uh, keep an eye on team's velocity it's again a very good ma matrix which i follow but the problem is that initially after two or three sprints you can get a fair amount of idea about your team's velocity so one of the matrix or report which i look around on daily basis is jira through jira is the, uh, i see team's velocity and again i will come back to burn down chart and burn up chart i keep in close eye on uh, these two uh, charts as well and 
one more thing i watch uh, watch out is uh, basically teams predictability and uh, yes so these are some things which i keep in close eye and i also look one thing what i have shared with my team is i have shared a risk uh, uh, risk uh, excel sheet what i did or what i do with them is i have created a um, risk matrix and i have planned accordingly that if when the product owner is giving you some uh, user stories and if you are not clear then if the product owner it himself is not clear then give it a red mark and if the product owner is clear and you are not clear so you can again go back to the product owner and you can ask him or her multiple times so you can give it a yellow color and uh, green color sorry and suppose product owner and you both you are not uh, on on the same page so you can give it again a red color so this type of chart or excel i have created with my team so they up update it on daily basis on uh, seeing the factors that whether it will uh, it should come in red zone green zone or yellow zone so this is again a new thing which i have started and it worked pretty much well in my last sprint which got over uh, yesterday only so and apart from the team predictability that delivered committed uh, user story in a sprint divided by total committed user story in a sprint this i have learned from you itself sunan uh, you have shared this thing you this matrix in our whatsapp group so i have used this thing in my last sprint and i got a clear picture that what is my team predictability and apart from that again team reliability and how you calculate it is delivered story points in a particular sprint and you divide it by the planned story points in a sprint and multiply it by 100 so these both things i have learned from you itself sunan so thanks for it so these are some things which i am uh, matrices which i am using right now get okay, sachin uh, yeah thanks thanks for the answer and uh, how you deal with the uncertainties like if your team member goes on sudden leave so as a scrum master what will be your next steps yeah sure sunan so i would like to answer this question that life is pretty much uncertain uh, it can it contains uncertainties which you can't predict in advance so for instance you have asked me that if 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 your particular team member goes on sudden leave so you can't plan that thing in uh, at the start of your sprint because uncertainty is a part of your life and is a part of your team so suppose if a team member goes on a, a sudden leave so i try to communicate with my team i first of all look around that the work assigned to that particular guy who has gone on leave can be accumulate that thing within the rest of the team if yes then we are good to go if no suppose my developer communicate back to me that sachin it's not possible to that we can accumulate his or her work uh, that the resource who has gone on leave so initially they were very reluctant and they came under pressure that how we are going to complete his work because our own work we can complete but that particular resource who is on leave it's not possible to accumulate that work and th this will jeopardize the uh, end goal or the sprint goal ultimately so they were very reluctant so what i taught them initially i uh, on their beh behalf i uh, usually what i do i go back to my product owner and i try to uh, renegotiate the uh, scope of the sprint because scrum itself says that you have to be there are three pillars uh, in scrum what uh, what scrum says first is transparency then inspection and adaptation adaptation so what i follow here is that you you should be very transparent and again you have to be very courageous which is one of the uh, scrum value and you have to be open so it's i straight forward go back to my product owner and this i coach to my team as well that this time i am going back to my product owner and i will try to renegotiate this, this the scope of the sprint initially what happens sometimes product owner doesn't uh, agrees with you but when you try and you try to communicate in a manner that boss this will jeopardize our sprint goal and it's nobody's fault because uh, if a person is going on sudden leave this can happen in future also so by trying to communicate and doing the negotiation thing things work and product owner ultimately agrees with the scrum master or with the team and at that particular point at time as a in a, as a part of a new scrum team i got a chance to teach my team as well that boss don't be afraid that product owner is a very big guy or that type of thing don't uh, create that type of uh, false things in your mind 
you have, you are a, uh, you are a part of scrum framework so you have to follow scrum values and this time i have helped you out and in future also i will help you but gradually take things on your own and try to negotiate directly with the product owner don't uh, wait for me sometime maybe i am i will be on leave so uh, okay will you wait for two days that sachin will come back and then we will then he will try to negotiate with the product owner so i got a chance to teach my team or coach my team as well and they came to, they agreed with me so this type of uncertainty is very uh, this is the straight forward thing uh, or way to deal with that okay okay thanks thanks sachin for that okay and uh, if you join as a scrum master right so how you are going to deal with the, your new team or with already established team uh, yeah sure sonan so as of now when i joined infosys as i already told you that i have joined a pretty much new scrum team where only one of the developer she has worked earlier in agile scrum methodology so as a new scrum master what i suggest uh, i am telling this with my experience only that go there and spend some time with your team don't go directly from the first day or the second day when you are associated with your team you get associated with your new team don't try to teach them scrum agile scrum straight forwardly take your time for at least one sprint or two sprint try to observe things that how your team is behaving how your team is uh, reacting to the situations and accordingly take decision then gradually you will build you, you you will be able to build a rapport with your team and try to see instances or yes instances that this is the particular moment you can teach scrum to your team so take things very gradually don't be in a hurry that yeah i am a scrum master i know scrum very well so from the first or second day itself go and uh, try to teach or coach them because things take time because you are new to the organization not on the members are new to you it's a vice versa thing so it's my typical approach that try to just observe go into meetings and observe your team members your product owner that how they are communicating how they are what is their work style so gradually after one two sprints you will build a kind of rapport with them not 100% but 20% and within one month or two months you will get to know each other very well and then as a scrum master you can try to uh try different things to teach them or coach them where they are lacking and if it's already established scrum team then again go there observe them again because they have already set some uh, might have set some uh, rules or uh, agendas for the as a as a scrum team so try to learn those things try to uh, have a one on one conversation with each of your team member whenever you get uh, get time for 5 minutes or 10 minutes looking at the, that you can't you can't uh, jeopardize the sprint goal itself but you can again observe them and by observing you will come to know that what the standards they have set for that uh, as a scrum team so these are two different approaches which i usually follow uh, sonan okay yeah thanks for that sachin okay so if your uh, product owner is a i would say a pushy guy and uh, if he is uh, if she is pushing the developer for taking extra user stories so as a scrum master how you will uh, work with product owner in those kind of scenarios uh yeah again sunan uh, i would like to start that scrum is a empirical process so what it says that you have to continuously inspect and adapt as a team as a developer as a scrum master as a product owner because it's it it is it is an entire scrum team which i am talking about right now so suppose for instance if he or she is a pushy guy our product owner is a pushy guy and see at the time of sprint planning itself as i told earlier in this interview that you you come upon on a on a mutual agreement and that agreement what i do as a scrum master i communicate with my stakeholder as well that boss after two week completion of the two weeks uh, two week sprint we are going to deliver this much mvp minimal viable product so if he is trying to push suppose because again what scrum says that developers are the best guys who are going to work hands on on the user stories they are going to develop those user stories they are the best guys who can decide that we can take x amount of user stories so we should respect their decision again because again respect is a one important value in scrum and if 
product owner is not trying is trying to push the team so again you can't jeopardize the sprint goal you have committed 14 user stories and your team is not uh, uh, team's capacity is not uh, is of only 12 user stories or 11 they can compute only 11 12 so why to jeopardize the sprint goal so directly communicate back to the product owner that boss we can't let down our stakeholders or our team by the end of the two week sprint suppose you have committed 14 and team is only able to going uh, complete well and what will be what is the use of that sprint goal why are you planning why are you communicating to the stakeholders and try to tease them again be transparent be courageous be open be respectful so gradually i am sure that maybe that product owner he is a pushy guy maybe he will not understand you in the first go but gradually when he will come to know this thing then yes for sure he will agree with you uh, as a scrum team or as a uh, with scrum master or the entire development team so this is the process which you can adapt or you can take uh, to deal with your product owner if he is he or she is a uh, pushy guy yes sachin uh, i think we are good uh, we have uh, covered all the questions uh, which have been asked um, in the pwc interview so thanks for your time sachin yeah thank you sunan thanks from my end as well for providing me this opportunity for this interview opportunity with you yeah thanks sachin have a nice day thank you sunan you too have a nice day bye take care